Paddy McCartan, welcome back to the Dylan Friends podcast, my friends. An absolute pleasure, honour, privilege, fun time. Thank you, mate. No, it's good to be back. A bit different to last time we caught up in Armadale. We did. We caught up at your place in Armadale, I reckon, nearly three years ago, two years ago. Uh, yeah, a bit over. Oh, I reckon bang on two almost. I reckon it would be too. Bang on two, yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, it was a bit different to this amazing setup we're in here now. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Jeez. And uh, it's an honor to have you back, as I said. But there is something I want to talk about last time. It was a start of really big things for this show. Okay, yeah. the show was nothing till we had you on. <laughs> and I remember you told this story about your car. Oh, man. And how... Yeah. Can you can you quickly just recap that story? Because if some people haven't heard it, they'll go back and listen. But yeah. it's one of the best stories of all time. Yeah, yeah. It's, it'll take... This could be five or ten minutes. Okay, just have some time. I'll, I'll go through it. <laughs> right, so, so basically what happened, we played um, the Cats down at Sleepy Hollow, down in Geelong... Um, on a Sunday night, right? So loose. Blockbuster. Yeah, oh, Blockbuster. I think we got done by about 115 and yeah, it was a ripper. So I went, we, I stayed at Loose's place. She lived just around the corner um, from Geelong out of the footy ground and then mum and dad went to the pub um, that night. The old man has the Barlin Club in Geelong. Quick shout out to Barlin Club. Um, get we love the Barlin Club. Great beverages, food, music. Bollock. It's great. And they dropped my car around at Loose's place for the next morning. I had to get up and go to training as you do after the next day and um, they left the keys in the letterbox. So, you know, that's generally a pretty safe plan. Got up the next day, had my bags packed, ready to go to training, excited, uh, ready to make the trip up the highway. And I walk out the door and the car isn't there. The car was not there. So I'm like, oh, maybe mum and dad have left it at home. I'll go around and get it. So I call them. No, we left it there. So now it's coming to me that the car's been stolen. So <laughs> call up the cops and say that the car's been stolen. Me and Luce drive back to Melbourne get to melbourne go to the front door and our house has been broken into so everything's been stolen um which is good yeah. <laughs> it's not <laughs> it's good. ideal so this is monday morning we've just been absolutely pumped so the, the week started off well um so anyway a few weeks go past and i'm sort of calling the insurance company like the car's gone you know get paid out and i'm like it's not really a bad result in the end um so the, after 30 days they generally pay you out with the insurance so it's been 30 days i'm like yep the money's going to be in the account tomorrow the stroke of midnight like literally i think it was like 11 45 or something i get a call from the cop saying look mate your car's been found in windham vale <laughs> where, where? so if anyone's not familiar windham vale is like just out of werribee okay like, like, yeah so, good spot yeah, yeah. Re reasonable yep um and there's been a homeless man and his dog living in your car so i'm just like well that's i mean i would have taken the payout but this is all right um, so yeah, there was a, a homeless man and his dog living in my car for a few weeks and they gave it a few details and I picked it up and back into it. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so, so what's happened here again, this story does not get old. No, no, it doesn't. But basically someone stole the car and then they on sold it to someone. Yeah. To a homeless guy. Which, and he was, which is the sad part of the story. Yeah. Oh, right? Very sad. Oh, no, 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 I'm not laughing about yeah, that. No, all. neither. Um, I don't know where the homeless guy found the money to pay for the the Prado, which I bought brand new like two months before, but anyway, yes, that's that's fine. And then I'm actually happy he was living there. I'm happy he had somewhere to live. But the the, the just the strange part is that you actually are still driving that car. Oh now. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's it's up in Sydney, man. Um, and I can and and occasionally my brothers and stuff get in and they reckon they can still smell the dog. The part that as much as I love that story, yeah, it's got to be one of the all time stories of all time. Yeah, it's pretty. Fun. Is the fact that that was the first article ever written about the show. Oh, was it? So that article went viral. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Perfect. And I thank you for that. Yeah. And if I thank want, you for the exclusive. If I ever want to sell the car, I'm in big, big trouble. Exactly. You will never get a good <laughs> no, price. That no car. Actually, you could get more. Yeah. But the funny thing about that was a radio station in Sydney, I was driving home and they were telling this story like it was their own. You're kidding me. It was on oh. Fitzy and Whipper's radio station and they were telling the story like it was their own story. So this they've day, three it. years down the track, they'd robbed me of that story. It, it, it was your story. Wait, so they've they robbed it, it off the podcast and told it on radio. What? Wait, so they were saying that there was their car that got stolen? No, no, no. Oh, they, they were using, they were using you. They were using oh. your story and telling it. Is there some sort of copyright infringement? I don't there, know. Don't I'm going to look into that and get my people to tell your people. But yeah, again, yeah. thank you for that story. And I hope mate, that if pleasure. anyone hadn't heard that one, I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, it's a fantastic story. Mate, yeah, I, it's good now in <laughs> hindsight. At the time, it was full on. But nah, 11.59 is the... It was literally the struggle of midnight, mate. I was meant to get paid out the next day. I was pumped for the insurance. Like, new car. I was, had my head around it. And then all of a sudden, there's a homeless guy and his dog living in Wyndham Vale. So, <laughs> things turn quickly, mate. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> now, mate... A lot has transpired since our last podcast. It has. Um, it's been a 
yeah, as you said, two years. A lot has, a lot has happened for both of us. Mm. Um, and I'm sure we'll touch on a lot of it today. Yeah. Firstly, what's news? How are you? What's been happening of late? Obviously, last year, COVID, you took some time out of the game. What's mm. transpired since then? Yeah, man. So I had um, last year off, which was probably more just based around getting my head right. Um, and that was sort of something me and the club, the Saints sort of worked out. Um, that went really well and I felt great. So um, had the year off and I was going to get back to hopefully playing um, middle of last year and then COVID hit and that sort of put a bit of a dint in that. So um, yeah, just sort of cruised down a lot around last year and tried to get really fit and enjoy the year off and do some things for me. And then um, now I'm up in Sydney. So playing there this year in the um, in the VFL. I don't even know what it is, East Coast VFL. Yeah. So that'll be awesome, man. My brother obviously is up there, Tommy, and um, just good to get out of Melbourne for a bit and a bit of a change of scenery and start fresh. So that'll be good. And then hopefully start playing and go all right and get back on the list. That's the plan. No, I'm sure you will, man. I'm sure you will. Mm. I'm very excited for your no, next thank you, brother. 12 months. But um, first, I suppose today's, the aim of today is to, to talk about what you know, you've been through the mm. last you know, sort of 24 months, mm. what's happening inside of you know, footy and then actually what you're doing in business as well yeah. now, which is, yeah. is very exciting. But um, take me back to, I suppose, the ending of, of Saints, yeah. um, you know, parting ways with them. How did, it, how did it all finish? Was it on good terms? Was it, was it understanding? Uh, and Yeah, no, nah, man. It was, um, I think, just the same as anyone who gets sort of let go from a club, really. I think, obviously, my circumstances were quite unique, you know, mm. like, um, yeah, the plan was to sort of have the year off and then come back. And then obviously with COVID and a few of those things, that sort of threw a spanner in the works, um, which is fine. I get that. And I know that, you know, I'm not the only one in the AFL system who's been affected by COVID, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, I can't fault the Saints at all. I can't fault, um, you know, the support they gave me through the concussion. I know, as I said, it was quite a unique experience for myself, for the club, for everyone involved, really, um, just the nature of it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've still got a lot of great relationships with people there. And, um, you know, I saw yesterday they went really well and had a good win in their first practice, which made me happy. So, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of my mates are there and, and stuff like that. And I think, um, you know, as, as you do when you get sort of let go from a the club there at the start, you feel a bit bitter and twisted, but that's just footy, mate. And, um, yeah, it is what it is. I can definitely relate to that. Like you sort mm -hmm. of... At a, at a stage, you sort of feel like, yeah, fuck, you know, times to maybe to move on or just yeah. do something different. Like, yeah, you know, definitely. Just, especially when it can get yeah. stale. Like, we had very different endings to careers. Don't no. get me wrong. Okay, mine, <laughs> I didn't have a choice in mine yeah. whatsoever. Okay? Oh, well, yeah, well, yeah. Different circumstances. No, no, no. no, no it's, but it's all the same though, you know. And as I said, you sort of, I mean, I walked away from it and I sort of went, shit, you know, like, I feel like um, I've still got plenty to give, mm. um, which uh, I'm sure all people do when they sort of get told that they're not required anymore, which is fine. Um, and obviously there's some things to do with my head as well which probably impacted that too and a few COVID things as well so it's fine mate and you know I, I look back on my experiences with the Saints um, over the last sort of five years six years and um, if I'm basing it on if I walked out of the doors a better person than when I walked in mm. and a more grown round person well then um, it was a success so uh, you know was it the storybook fucking career that I was thinking it was going to be probably not um, but you know my head played a big part in that and, and that's something now that I feel really confident in and I'm hoping that going up to Sydney I can start afresh and and um, and keep going yeah for sure and so just an update on that because we're going to be touching on it a lot today mm. I suppose but everything's going really well um, yep. with you and, yep. and the concussions and, and yeah, everything man. head's all good you're ready to go for big 2021 yeah man yep so yeah we'll go over obviously everything that led up to this point but in terms of in the right here right now I'm um, I'm absolutely raring to go so um, it's good man like it's been as I said uh, it's been a massive process I was talking about it before the show to get to this point and I've had to jump over a lot of hurdles and a lot of roadblocks um, and that's just because you know concussion's such a unique injury and you know you've got doctors of the highest quality at afl clubs and even to them it's an unknown mm. um which makes it really difficult to treat and people to be confident in their decision making and, and i completely understand that but in the right here right now i'm raring to go and um uh, looking forward to playing some footy man because i i was thinking when i got here i think the last time we spoke that's probably about the last time that i played almost two years ago um in the last it was the last um jlt game before the season started when i hit my head so oh, yeah no. so i'm looking forward to getting back out and having a run well, yeah man. no mate i'm i'm looking forward to it too man but yeah. um let's let's go back and let's let's sort of talk about what's transpired mm. since firstly i want to talk about concussions in general because yeah. i think you know we've we've been you know close mates for a while yeah. and 
obviously I'm always there to support you, but yeah. I never wanted to press too much on mm. what it was. I've been in a system myself and had yeah. concussions, but for some reason, until you know today, I've thought, what the fuck actually is a concussion? Like, yeah, man. I get it. You know, mm. we hit our heads. Um, you know, the brain is yeah. What what like I still can't I can't even really yeah. define it. Like, so I mean it's as i said to you before the show like it's hard to for me to sort of explain exactly what a concussion is broadly because they're so unique to each individual yep so basically i think with a concussion it's obviously that the brain bounces around inside your head due to impact and then that causes concussive symptoms and they're all different depending on who you are and what you're going through but for me i've had eight concussions over the last um well, six years now which sounds like a lot and it is a lot um but they've all been different every time mm. Um, and the symptoms have been different. The return time to playing has been different. The return time to being able to live my life normally has been different on each one of those. Um, so, you know, generally I've been really lucky and you know, I've hit my head. I've had those symptoms during the game and then, um, you know, one or two days go past and then it sort of gets better and better and better and then I'm right to go again. But then this last one I had, that was completely different. Mm. Um, and for what reason that is, I'm not sure. Um, and was probably something for a while I was trying to work out and whether it was because I've had this many or um, was it something else or was it, you know, and, but it really fucked me up bad, man, like for a long time, <laughs> which is, yeah, which is hard. Um, but, you know, with what a concussion is, it's, I can't even really explain exactly what it is. Um, but I know that it's really unique to each individual. I think that's like today and even just hearing that now, it's, something that a lot of people wouldn't understand mm. is the fact that a concussion and, and the way you sort of referred to it earlier, which really struck with me, was like when you do a hammy, yeah, everyone knows how to treat yep. a hammy. Yeah, exactly right. But with a concussion, no matter if it's the same person mm. with multiple, they're all yep. different. Yeah, definitely. And that's and that's the thing I think about um, even at the moment with the AFL trying to work out like how they manage it and like what they do with players who hit their head and stuff like that. Um, it's so difficult because, you know, say if you do a hammy, like like low grade it's pretty much four weeks isn't it mm. three weeks four weeks and then every doctor pretty much all over australia whatever sport it is like whether it's local footy whatever, yeah. it's pretty much like it's four weeks mate this is the rehab and, and you've got back. the history to show like yeah, this is yeah, you know this you is, run after yeah, a week you can yeah. start doing weights and, yeah exactly right and we've done this with this person it's been good so you know we'll use it with you and with a calf or whatever you know um but with a head knock it's different for every individual and not only different for every individual but every time the individual has one it's different so it's not like I've had eight every time they've been the same. Exactly. It's like I've had eight every time they've been different. And um, the first one was different, the second one, the second one was different, the third one, the third one, the fourth, you know? So it's sort of like, you can see why it's so difficult for docs and specialists and people to treat them. And then on top of that as well, one thing that I found, and I'm sort of sidetracking a little bit, but one thing that I found quite difficult at the start of the last one as well was that um, I saw a lot of specialists and a lot of their opinions were different. Mm. So you sort of go in and go, you know, these specialists are the best in their field. And every time the opinion was different. So I'm sort of walking out of these things going, they're like, you know, we, we think this is what's going on. And you walk out and go, all right, no worries. And then you walk to the, you go to the next specialist and they go, we think this is what's going on. You walk out and go, all right. And you end up walking out of four or five and you're what the fuck is going on here? Like I've got absolutely no clue what's happening. Some of them are saying, you know, we think it could be three weeks, we think it could be six weeks, we think it could be fucking a year. And it leaves you confused and sort of unsure about what's going on, which is which is just the nature of the injury. And I think that's what makes it so different to, you know, a hammy or a calf or a knee or it's just the unique way it's treated and the fact that there is no timelines on it. And that's what can make it so difficult, especially from, I mean, my mental health really struggled with it. And I think a big part of that was because of the, fact that there was no timelines on mm. things and i was you know in the the worst place i've ever been in like in terms of my how i felt you know i just couldn't do basic tasks and when that gets taken away from me and you don't know when you're going to get it back um uh, that that's difficult and that's probably yeah i mean I, yeah it's fucking scary like yeah. i'm like i'll get goosebumps even thinking about yeah. it because like they can't give you a definitive answer that's mm. when you actually go fucking hell like yeah i oh mean absolutely the unknown is fucking scary the unknown <laughs> the unknown is a scary thing oh about. man it's brutal hey and that's and i think that's probably even why now i've come out of this and i've learned so much about myself and grown so much is because i've had to spend so much time dealing with the unknown and sort of 
putting myself into this like space of not knowing what's happening how do you get just, comfortable in that though like oh i don't think you do i definitely i definitely haven't gotten comfortable in it but i've just learned to deal with it, it yeah and i think that's why even now and it's funny because man like you ask anyone who's close to me growing up like i was so shit scared of not knowing what was happening and like change scared the shit out of me and mm. you know even I'll, I'll talk about this sometimes with like some crew and i moved schools when i was in year 10 uh, in year 11 and like for the first like two months man i was like shit scared like crying and like where well, i was like 17 mm. um about moving schools and like this unknown would just scare the shit out of me um and then you know over the last well not the last two years because but the probably the six or seven months where i was really struggling i just had to learn to live in that unknown and sort of just be in it and sort of and you know i just listened to m's podcast the other day and sort of just being in the present and that's stuff and, I, and i've worked with them before and that's stuff that she's taught me a lot about is just not worrying about the future too yeah. much um but at the same time when like your livelihood is riding on that it makes it a bit more difficult that's what i mean because you you're you're living in the present but you're also there is a timeline on it yeah you need to get up yeah well you want a timeline for one but two it's like mm. you need to know no, what's happening yeah absolutely man and that's why i think it's um as we said before and this the first the original question was about the concussion and the unknown and the treatment of it that's what makes it i think probably the most difficult injury in the afl or probably forever but at the present time is just because of the unknowns Mm. associated with it yeah had seven concussions and you're playing how long were you playing before the last one like in between the seventh and the eighth um oh it would have been over a year like yeah over, yeah a while they, went, they hadn't been one for a while which was yep. good yeah i was feeling feeling really good at that time and then and then talk us through probably what led up to that to that last one yeah so we we're playing um i'm a bit hazy man on the actual details after but i remember before we so we played um the bulldogs at ballarat which which was good nice and cold there that day yeah, it was cool. yeah um so it was the last jlt obviously so i had obviously as all players during the pre-season I had a good pre-season was feeling fit and feeling ready to go and um yeah, I just ran back and um, one of the boys came through and just clipped me on the head and um, and that was that. And it sort of, yeah, it happened pretty quick, obviously. But um, yeah, I can't remember too much. I sort of the first thing I remember is um, waking up the next day in the hospital. Um, that's sort of what I still remember now. I mean, you sort of go along and people tell you about things that happen and you sort of feel like you remember it. But the first thing I can remember is sort of being in hospital in Ballarat the next day. Um, I think they kept me there overnight just to like, check on me and make sure i was all right loose came picked me up and drove me back to melbourne and um yeah that was sort of the start of it and probably from that point on um for the best part of four or five months um yeah i just couldn't really do much at all man like i couldn't um i couldn't go to the supermarket i couldn't um watch tv i couldn't like sit in the lounge room with the lights on uh, i couldn't drive my car couldn't go to the club really I couldn't really do anything um and that was really hard you know because you sort of go from this macho like footy player who's you know feeling fit and fucking million bucks you know playing footy and you're sort of invincible and then you know within the space of 10 seconds um you're you know pretty much nothing like compared to what you were and you sort of just lose your identity a little bit uh, which is really tough you know like and i think the hardest part I found was going through that but also seeing like um like Lewis who was um like pretty much looking after me all the time watching her watching me go through that and then my family like Lewis's family you know like it this like snowball effect that it had people watching me just turn into this like not being able to do anything um was was really hard and I think you know I'm making it sound like maybe worse than it was but it just it's what it is and I think you know so one of the big reasons why i wanted to have this chat with you as well was that i know that there's people going through the same thing that i've been through um and just to so that they know that they're not the only ones that are going through it, you mm-hmm. know um but yeah it was really tough man um yeah and as i said you just get like your sort of livelihood taken away a bit but um you know I'm, i've come out the other side of it and i feel good but yeah that sort of three or four months was fucking pretty full on fuck man i yeah yeah Oh, I can't imagine, man. I honestly, I fucking feel weirdly as a friend. I just wish that I. Oh no, had man. Supp- like, no, no, it's all, mate. You know, fucking, I, you're fine, brother. It's and that's a, and that's the thing as well, you know. Like, you don't want to be a like. 
yeah yeah mate it's and it's so unique as well as i said like people go through this stuff all the time like and there'd be people who um you know don't have the football profile that i have mm. that are going through this stuff as we speak and i know there is um and i think the toughest part about that is that with like and i know how i was feeling i just couldn't find the strength to do too much stuff and then with that you sort of lose those not you don't lose connections at all but you know just i'm like with me say for example i'm i'm very not outgoing but i love connecting with people i love going out and mm. having to be with my friends and like catching up with my mates and catching up with everyone and you sort of get that taken away and then all of a sudden it just gets a bit weird and like so you know it's it affects every aspect of your life the concussion stuff just because it affects your ability to be able to do easy things whereas you know with a hammy or a calf or you can still do stuff like yeah and it's it. something that a lot of people have experienced before the yeah. history's there with it yeah absolutely and that's probably the one thing too just to, is with the concussion stuff i'm not making i'm not trying to make it sound like it's the worst thing ever but i think the one difference with concussion compared to um say like a hammy or a calf or a knee is that when you when you've got a hammy or a calf or a knee or an ankle or you can sort of leave that at the club so like when you're injured you go to the club you you know you, it's fucking shit and you do your rehab and all that but you walk out the door and you get in the car and it's like oh, i'm just going to park that for now to a certain extent and just leave that there and then tomorrow when i come in i'll restart it but with with the concussion it sort of follows you everywhere and that's probably the the hard the hardest part about it i reckon and even you know with that as well um and not that footy clubs or you know afl mm. local vfl clubs make you feel like this on purpose and it's more the pressure you know you put on yourself when yeah. you're injured but you do feel like it's you know you're there for one thing yeah. and when you can't do it yeah man it's it's fucking it's hard and oh, even, you know, like i've had that with shoulders i oh, went man. to the giants with calves yeah. and i'm sitting there going fuck these guys have taken a chance on me i can't even fucking Mate, it's the same get with myself injury. out yeah but with you for especially like you were saying as well and we've chatted about this is like you go into the club and because it's not an injury that you can see mm. or you can scan yeah. or you can it's, it's it's not something that's sort of a physio can treat mm. you oh. sort of just go everyone would think oh he's actually all right but yeah absolutely man and that's and that's probably the hard thing and i think for for me i'm not a, i'm not massive in saying like i'm really struggling man like i'm fucking going through them um, and i think that's something i've definitely gotten better at going through this experience but you go into the club and and I'd go in casually and see the docs and stuff and the boys would be like, oh, here you going, mate? And I'd just be like, yeah, I'm all right. Like, mm. I've got a few headaches and stuff, but I'm all sweet. Just sort of bat it off. Um, but we were saying before, like, if I walked in there with, like, this bandage around my head and blood pissing out of it and shit, people were like, mate, what are you doing here? Like, mm. go home. <laughs> why, why are you even here? So that's probably the part where um, it can be a bit more difficult, especially for people who, are, who struggle being vulnerable or struggle saying that they're not okay or that they really need help. And I think at an AFL club, obviously the docs are there and you tell them exactly what's going on, but more just with your peers and like coaches and people you really respect, it can be really difficult to say that you're, you're really struggling. Um, and that's with any injury, not just concussion. Like, you know, I see, you see it with people with like sore groins or hammies or calves or quads or whatever it is, you know, to say that you're struggling is tough to do. Fucking oath, 100%. You know, mm. I've only like, you know, people would sort of listen to the show now and think that, for a reason like i was always like this like there's times when you know you, it's a skill mm. it's actually a skill yeah like talking about your feelings and being vulnerable is oh, a skill man, like a, you get better at it oh, by just doing definitely. it you don't like no one is good at no, being no, vulnerable no. um but no. you just learn to just like yeah not give a really not give not not give a fuck but you just learn to just embrace it and yeah and go about it um that three four five months mm. six months period post that yeah um concussion you said you know like there was some sh fucking yeah yeah physical mental um hardships like in it what what were some of those things like what like in yep. terms of so your yeah. experiences yep. yeah so so basically the as i was mentioning before like the i had this um involuntary spasm with my eyes so basically what happened is that my eye like have you ever like cross tried to cross your eyes i, I get a headache when i do that yeah so yep. that that was happening to me without maybe being able to control it so like my eyes would spasm and cross and i'd get these like blistering headaches man just from that happening all the time um so basically what i had to do was i went and saw um brett jarrell his name is, is a, a neuro chiro in south yarra and um kobe kobe stevens had seen him because mm -hmm. he went through something similar to me oh, like in terms of concussion he had a sort of similar experience um 
and it had been a few months and I'd sort of seen a few specialists and, you know, I was really struggling. And you know, as I said before, I couldn't really watch TV. I couldn't, light sound sensitivity was horrendous. I couldn't really drive or do any exercise or anything really. And I'm sort of getting to this point where like, I need to just try something because I haven't got anything to lose. So um, I went and saw Brett and he basically ran me through all these tests. And What sort of tests? Like we're talking um, to, you know, those yep. computer tests? Uh, yeah, kind of a bit different. So... Um, like like a lot of eye related testing so like following things seeing what my eyes do um moving up and down um watching my heart rate as i'd like so i'd lie down and then i'd stand up and like what my heart rate would do when i just go from lying to standing um things like that um and basically at the end of that and a few other tests he sort of thought that yeah and i went to america as well with him Mm -hmm. and they sort of thought that i had this um sort of involuntary spasm i forget what it was called scientifically i'm not very good at that shit though yeah so i um yeah went over there and they did a few tests and yeah i've got this eye thing and basically the next um oh three or four months were just me doing these exercises to try and fix that um so i came back from the states which was amazing man like went over there and did to um, the neuro wellness institute in chicago and met some amazing people and brett came over with me um and so in america this is a, this is a bit of i'm sidetracking a little bit here too oh, wait, it's your show no, no it's your show no. <laughs> <laughs> it's our show <laughs> um i came I, I went over there and they do so you know in australia you do like maybe one appointment a week or if you're seeing like a physio or yep. you know you go to one appointment a week and then come back next week yep in america they do like intensives so i went over there and did five days six hours a day um, which is full on, but so, so good. Um, and it was probably, I mean, when you break it down like that, like it'd be the, the equivalent of doing like 13 or 14 weeks, probably worth of appointments with like a certain person mm. all in the one week. And it f- like, as soon as I got there, they're like, this is what we think's going on with you. This is what we need to do. They had all these like equipment and stuff, man. Like, you know, at um, NASA, the those chairs they sit in like the anti-gravity and they flip them around and yeah. shit like that yeah like they had them there and I'm like sitting in there I've got videos on my phone I can show you if you want well like they were making you like no, dizzy like, or? So, no no so spinning me like around and watching what my eyes do when I'm moving like yeah, in okay. space yeah stuff like that um, so I was crazy man like I opened my eyes up like, literally to so many different things so then we did this week there Brett was over there with me we came back um, and did four one hour sessions a week for probably four months and that was what really got me going in the right direction which is sort of i mean this pod is about talking about the experience i've had with concussion and i think the most important part that i want to relay is that i've come out the other side of it yeah um and you know brett was a fucking massive part of that man and the work we put in together and um and a lot of that was all eye related stuff so um like sounds stupid man but like there'd be a dot on the wall and i just like look up and down at it up and down keep looking up and then i'll do that like for an hour and like it sounds real tedious and stupid but like that was the stuff that was fixing me and that's where i started to start from to get back to now playing footy again um so the layers to it are sort of nuts man like you go from like feeling shocking and sort of not thinking there's going to be anything ever happening ever again and then all of a sudden it sort of starts to flick and switch and then you like find confidence in yourself and then it builds and builds and builds and then it's almost like the same as like a footy pre-season you know you put the work in and all of a sudden you start to feel more confident in your own body and how you're mm. feeling and because it did it got to a point where i just completely lost confidence in That's my what I mean. did you act, like you would have got to a stage when people were saying all these different things as you're saying yeah. before where you're like fuck am i ever going to be able to fix this yeah oh definitely man for sure and you just lose your your confidence in your ability to be able to do normal things and just function and I think I'd go, I'd get in the car with Luce or with whoever, you know, to go to the supermarket and I'd just be like, fuck, am I going to be able to do this? Like, and, and then when you can start doing it again, that's the stuff that you've almost got to like start retraining yourself and just go, yeah, I can do it. I can definitely do it and not worry about like everything that's happened before. It's almost like you've got this like post-traumatic stress or something. Mm. And I, and it's probably what I did have, you know, like I went through this experience and it takes time to just be able to build confidence back in your own body like anyone who's come back from a knee or these long-term injuries if if you're talking about footy related stuff um it takes time to build that confidence back and it definitely did with me but i think on the back of the work i put in and starting to feel better and doing all this stuff with brett and then next like it sort of comes back slowly 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 and then yeah 
here I am now. No, that's awesome, man. I think that's like, the, as, as you said, and, and to further your point, like the main point is chat today is when we we're chatting a few months ago about it is to sort of sort of like a, a, a therapy session in such of a Dylan Friends edition. Mate, it like is. Like putting it to bed. Mate, it is. It's like therapeutic for me, this stuff. Um, and I think, as I said, dear, when we were talking um, a couple of months ago, like this stuff is is um, is really hard for me to talk about um, because it is probably does bring up a lot of sort of not post-traumatic stress. Well, it probably is post-traumatic yeah, stress. it's not really. pleasant memories. No, it's shocking, man. Thing. No, it's horrific. I, and... And I, um, yeah, I find it really tough, but I think at the same time, you know, I'm going to come in and I'll speak with you, someone I feel really comfortable with. And I can almost just like put this to bed now. Um, and I think that's like, so something that makes me really excited, you know, cause you go from all these experiences you go through and, um, at a certain point I decided that I wanted to play footy again. And, you know, there were stages there where I thought maybe it wasn't going to happen and then now it is and whether like, I want it to be AFL and I'm, I'm sure it will be but at the moment it's just playing VFL and I'm so pumped about that man yeah. and I've got this like love for footy back which I probably you know because I, I probably just fell out of love with the game obviously after the last one just because of what happened and what was the byproducts of that but um, yeah I think today this chat is sort of like just putting a bit of a end to all of it that's been sort of spoken about so much and just letting everyone know that yeah it was really tough and a really tough time but i've come out the other side of it and you know i've said and this is weird man but in some fucked up way i i wouldn't change what's happened mm. which is so which sounds so random and people probably going what the hell have you just been talking about for the last like half an hour yeah. how long have been going but i wouldn't change it um just because of what i've learned about myself over the last two years I don't know if I ever would have learnt that in my life, probably, um, if I didn't go through this stuff. So, um, yeah, I just feel so much more rounded as a person through these experiences. And, um, you know, I want to take that into the next phase of my life and, um, you know, see what happens. Man, you, you are the epitome of this show. That, that, it, that, it makes, my, makes me really happy, not obviously what's happened, but for you mm. to say that and yeah. to, you know, like we talk about these big moments in life and you can go mm. either way you can treat it as a positive and, yeah. and you, you're right you just got to look at the positive side of things i haven't been through anything that you have but to hear that and be able to relate to it and still say mm. i wouldn't change it because at the end of the day it's made me a better person yeah definitely no for sure man i think that's like it's the same in any situation really and i think and don't get me wrong man there was a lot of times where i was like real pissed off with the world mm. and you know i i was speaking about this about, about this a bit earlier with you about like my mental health like I really struggled with that um for a bit um sort of through the middle parts of that um experience um which was tough and you know you have those times where um you know you get really despondent with the world and sort of go why me and that's natural too I think and that's just normal for people to go through that stuff especially in experiences where they've had things taken away from them or their experience with life has maybe been not what they thought it was going to be and I've and I've definitely gone through that, um, but I think you know I've been extremely lucky. The people I've had around me, the support I've had from from Lewis, my family, my friends, um, the footy club, the AFL, um, they've made that experience you know much easier than it would have been otherwise. I'm sure, and have got me to the point where I'm now. So um, yeah, it's not, it hasn't been smooth sailing the whole way through, brother. But um, yeah feels right now no it will be and there's plenty of good things to come before we do move on to the next phase mm. of, of everything you touched on then the mental health aspect of yeah. of concussion obviously a physical injury yeah. but it can quickly turn into a mental oh, God, yeah. injury as well yeah how like what's the relationship of that in in this you know is it yeah. like straight like is the physical side sort of does that get you in a hard spot or is it yeah i think i mean i think and this is I'm not a scientist by any stretch or a doctor but I think when I look at when I look personally at the correlation between because that's what they say the specialists and the doctors did say to me that there is a strong correlation between severe concussion and de clinical depression mm -hmm. um, and I think in the simplest way I look at it is that the, with me for example I was, a, I was playing AFL footy I was like the fittest I've been like felt amazing I had this confidence in myself and and then in the split second that gets taken away and you go from doing all of that to being able to do nothing and in that gap is just like a lot of stuff that you can't do anymore 
And I think when you get that taken away and you lose your livelihood and sort of all of, because that's, that's all I knew from when I was... It's your identity. Two, yeah, it's my identity, man. From two weeks out of school, you sort of go and this footy player and people go, oh, like, you know, footy and play and like, you know, you got this purpose and it's great. Like, I absolutely loved it, man. And I, and I was striving to get back there because it was so good. Um, and when that gets taken away, it leaves you with this sort of void. Um, and on top of that, you know, everything else that I was sort of going through is how I was feeling. Um, and, you know, I think some depression does slip in and, it, and definitely did for me. Um, and I'm happy to admit that and talk about that stuff because I think it's good to, to talk about it. Um, and I, I don't find it easy, but, um, you know, when you have stuff that you're so confident in and it gets taken away from you, I think, yeah, you it's fairly common for people to fall into that sort of space. And I think when you talk about a direct correlation between concussion and mental health stuff i don't know what that is but in my experience that's what it was for me mm. um it's yeah it's something that's really tough obviously and I'm, there's so many people that go through it but as i said before like with the support network i had around me it made it so much easier to go through and i feel so so lucky that i have that support system around me because i know that there's so many people out there that don't have that yeah and you know as we were saying earlier on the show like I, played, I was playing AFL, so I'm lucky enough to be able to see the best specialists, the best doctors. Um, I went to America, you know, I did all this stuff and I know that people don't have the access to that kind of stuff. And I feel so, so lucky that I've had that. Um, and, and, and on top of that, you know, it, it, it makes me want to try and help people as best I can to and share my experiences with them um, to make people going through concussions life a bit easier as well. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm super lucky, man. And as I know I've sort of sidetracked a little bit, but I was saying it before, I sort of just get on these spiels when I'm talking about this stuff. Nah, it's beautiful. But, yeah, I think, um, you know, I've been super lucky and I sit here now and I'm so grateful for everything that I had during that time because I know, as I said, there's so many people that haven't had what I've got. You know, what you were saying then about you've been at the top level, you've had all this support. Mm. And, and still it was a heart like a long oh, road you know like yeah. heart, like it took you know, it wasn't overnight that it got you to get back to this spot now where you no. pretend, where you will play footy again mm. and you will end up on a list again mm. <laughs> for people you know playing country footy yeah, man. local footy um do you think that these things would happen and they just go undiagnosed like I, I've, i'm just wondering yeah man like, I, I, I honestly think about that all the time that's something and i spend a lot of a lot of time thinking about that and I think when I think about the timeline and my, and I don't know, this is also what we were saying earlier about the concussion, how it's so unique and they're all different. So, you know, me thinking about my concussion the same as someone else who, like it's sort of not yeah. relevant, but at the same time, like, I think about the amount of people I saw, the amount of stuff I went through to get, because it took, it took the best part of 18 months probably for me to get, you know, back to like running around doing some contact training and feeling good again like that's a long time man and as i said i had this the best of everything just at my fingertips really mm. and i know there's so many people that don't have that and yeah it, i mean doesn't i mean it doesn't make me scared or what but like it, it's just i i do worry for people you know because as i said there's this there is this correlation between concussion and mental health and people who can't see a light at the end of the tunnel like it's fucking scary man Fuck no. and there yeah, you know what would you say to someone that is either you know playing footy and they think they might have had a concussion don't want to say anything because like i mm. i put my hand up now like mm. even when i played foot, footy mm. at the highest level I was trying to get into the team the last mm. thing i wanted to do was go fuck oh i got head knock nice mm. i feel pretty shit but yeah. like and i look back now and i go you fucking idiot yeah like, why would you do that you know like yeah but at the, when you're young, you just yeah. think you fucking yeah, parents, man. Like. Yeah, All right. the, the first thing I'd probably say to him is just listen to this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> if you want, uh, Dylan, friends, shout out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 nah, well, seriously though, like I think you know, because uh, and, and it's exactly what you were saying before about the the when you're at an AFL club or playing at any level of sport, you want to win and help people win and you were talking before about any injury you know when you went to the giants with your calves and you were reluctant to talk because they've taken a chance and you and mm. that's the same at any level of anything really and yeah. i just you know it's one of those things it's so delicate your head and um you know you need it forever so if if anyone is listening to this and they are 
they're unsure or they're, they think maybe it's happened or just go and have a chat about it because yeah. would, would you just go see a GP is that like the best thing to do or? man I think well at most local clubs like say for have a any, the, oh yeah they, they definitely do I, I would say I mean they have to and also like most every local club has got a doctor yeah um, and they're all really accessible I know that St. Joe's my local club in Geelong do and they're really good with that stuff um, and I'm sure it'll be the same everywhere especially with the way concussions going now but um, I just think if there's any doubt you know just have a chat about it because I'm sure if you're sitting at home and you're going fuck I'm, I think I might have hit my head last week but I'm not sure you'll definitely feel better about it mm. going and chatting to someone like chatting to a doctor same with anything you know you feel yeah. like you peace of mind more than anything and, and think about you know obviously I'm not an expert in this industry no industry, I'm not either in this, in this space either but there is such thing as like delayed concussions as well there is which yep. that's why I reckon I 100% yeah. had one of those yeah and man it wasn't till like I played on the weekend and you know like had a um, head knock very often but not very often I, wasn't <laughs> so, like, I remember it. and um, oh, yeah I just got tackled and it wasn't it wasn't a big thing wasn't like massive mm. but I remember just being a bit like oh fuck you know went back out finished the game was totally fine the next day I was at the beach yeah and I felt like and again, different symptoms for everyone. Yeah, yeah. But I felt like my head was behind me. Yeah. Like I was just, every time I moved, it was like... Just a bit off. It was just off. Yeah, yeah. Second and behind. the scariest part was at this stage, like I was driving my scooter yeah. home. Yeah. You know, from the beach. Yeah. Stupid. Like I couldn't get home any other way. And like, I remember being on the scooter and thinking I was like 10 meters away, but I was actually where I was. Yeah, it's scary. And I got yeah. home and I was like, fucking hell. Yeah, like, something going on. That's not good. Nah, it's full on, man. Yeah, and... And it comes in all different forms. Like I've, there's lots of people I've heard that have had like that. Like you, you sort of play and then you feel alright. And the next day you wake up and you're like, "What's?" And I think that's probably. I mean, I've never had one of those, but that would be the hardest thing to almost um, diagnose or to talk to the doctor because you're just not sure what's actually yeah, happened. Yeah, you don't want to like because you would have been sweet and you would have woken up the next day and be like, "What the fuck's going on here?" Um, so yeah, man, it's scary, and I think that's why if there's any ever doubt, any if there's ever any doubt, sorry. Um, to go and chat about it because as I said um, it's such a delicate delicate thing your yeah. brain and um, you don't want to stuff around with it no 100% yeah. And, and yeah to anyone out there again we further point yeah in, absolutely in footy just don't take those chances and, definitely and, but in saying that as well the best part about today is the fact that and you've said this is there is a way out of it and mm. it's not it's not um, doom and gloom like nah. you can get through it you oh, put absolutely. in the work Absolutely. Um, you look after yourself and you see the right people mm-hmm. you get to a stage where again you're going into you know you're playing footy again next year yep. um, you're playing in the NEFL they've actually gotten rid of the NEFL comp because I actually yeah, demolished it, it yeah yeah I heard that they so actually, they said like once I'd left they'd never yeah, have it again they actually told me about that when yeah. I was asking, thinking about going up there they're like yeah Dill's stuff the whole comp so now it's fair <laughs> because <laughs> he just tore this thing to shreds yeah I was yeah. like that doesn't surprise me it happens so they've had to, they've had to get up but no I'm you know I'm very excited for that view no same mate um, but brings us to a very exciting time because mm. in this mm. you've now created you're now an entrepreneur yeah there I don't is want some, to put, oh, I don't want to does, make, know, does that make two of us or we're no, entrepreneurs or, okay, right, we're business owners we're the same category yeah we <laughs> You know, we, we don't work for the man, we are the man. Yeah, we are the man now. I'm, I'm my own boss. At you the are. Talk us, through, <laughs> <laughs> talk, us, talk us through this next step, um, yeah. Helping Hands. You've built this, um, you know, off your own experiences, mm. awesome initiative. Yeah. Um, I want to hear more about it. Yeah. So, yeah, this is pretty much, ba- like when we were talking before about how I was feeling and, you know, I was going through these weird times and I sort of wasn't really sure what to make of this whole experience. I think the turning point was when, and I was talking about this about, about you, with you about this before the show, was a guy who used to teach me at school, Holty, his name is. Um, shout out. Shout, shout out to Holty, he's a ripper. Um, loves his footy and he had a really, really bad concussion. So he's um, he's got a wife and kids and you know young family and um, had a really bad stack um, when he was up and down and hit his head badly. And... Um, it knocked him around Same, similar to me probably worse and he's still still struggling a bit at the moment um, but he's made some really good progressions which is awesome but he called me probably 12 months ago it's a bit over 12 months ago and I spoke to him on the phone for about an hour and we just chewed the fat about you know his experiences how he's feeling what he's going through um, you know everything that he's feeling 
um, mentally, physically, how he's feeling and having his job taken away from him, not being able to do stuff that he used to be able to do. And basically, I just sat there and listened and I spoke to him about what I'd been through and shared some of my experiences as well. And um, and at the end of that, I got him on to Brett, who I had seen before um, and got him up to Melbourne and they built a bit of a relationship and a bit of a partnership um, working on his stuff too. And I got off the phone and he messaged me and said, mate, that's that's the best chat I've had with anyone um, in the last six months about anything I've, I've done, um, you know, just because you've been through it as well and I sort of I was driving back to Geelong actually when when he spoke to me and um the rest of the trip home I was kind of like fuck there could be something in this I think um just because of how obviously I, I sort of heard how it made him feel being able to just speak about mm. what he was going through and knowing that on the other end I'd been through something similar and it was like he wasn't talking to a brick wall going what the fuck's wrong with this bloke um and with that too it made me feel fucking brilliant you know because I was talking about this last night with someone and I was saying that when someone asks for your help, it's one of the best feelings there is. Yeah. You know, if someone says, mate, I need your help with something. Can you help me with this? And I got a massive kick out of it. And I sort of thought, well, maybe that's something I can turn this into. And that's where Helping Hands has come from. Um, Helping Hands by Paddy McCartan, mate. Just to make it there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trademark. Yeah, yeah, trademark, copyright, all your Dylan friends. <laughs> Shout out. Um, <laughs> so that's where this has come from. So basically, it's a support network system and a mentoring system for people going through concussion, type 1 diabetes, or mental health and well-being stuff, mm-hmm. as well as, and it can be one-on-one, or it can have their family or partners or friends involved as well. And basically what it is is that it's, exactly what I've spoken about that I went through with Holt is just the power of shared experience and um, creating a relationship to be able to speak about things that can be quite personal um, can be difficult to talk about with anyone else that you know you might not be comfortable with and yeah we build a relationship and and you know I try and make them the best version of themselves that they can be while dealing with these challenges that they're being presented with concussion or type 1 diabetes or mental health and well-being um and yeah and that's it and it's i mean it sounds like a really simple concept but there's a massive um market for it i think and um you know i've spoken to a lot of people over the last 18 to 24 months about concussion and probably longer with type 1 diabetes Mm. um and i just think that i've had these experiences that are so unique um and quite full-on and and confronting i've been through you know the highs and the lows and everything in between and i think for me to be able to relay my experiences and use the power of sort of shared experience to help people is an absolute no-brainer and um and you know when i was talking before about if i'd change any of this like on that day a couple of years ago i wouldn't because i think this has been the reason for this stuff Mm -hmm. happening and um you know i think for a lot of a lot of the two year or not two probably the 12 months before last year i spent spend it saying you know everything happens for a reason everything happens for a reason i kept saying it saying it but i had no fucking idea what the reason was for this happening i just think i said it to try and convince myself and i'm convinced now that this is why it's happened ah. um to try and you know help the lives of people who are going through what i've been through and not not diagnose them or tell them this is what you need to do to fix it or this is the exercise you need to do or but just to be able to connect on an emotional and personal level and use what i've gone through to help them unbelievable yeah <laughs> man it is it's you uh, know it's your credit to yourself bro and i think uh, i'm not surprised by everything you said today in the fact that you know what you've been through and what you've done what you've learned to, to help other people mm. um it's 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 on yeah it's unbelievable i think it's going to be a massive help well i don't think i know yeah. it's going to be a massive help. No. like you said you know the pe- the amount of people that have been through this the amount of people that un- you know unfortunately will go through mm. this um and like you said it's not giving them the answers it's not nah, diagnosing it's more just all. having someone to support that you obviously didn't have yeah you were absolutely man and that's what i and that's the whole base of it i think you know i'll do it over zoom at the moment because i'm living in sydney and obviously with all the covid and stuff like that but and that's sort of uh, in an ideal world it'll get to a stage where it's more personal catching up and things like that but i think um you know if i look back on my experience and even if i was a bit younger or older or whatever age you know and to be able to have someone, and I went through this, man, I spoke to like Kobe Stevens, for example. He was absolutely massive for me because um, 12 months before, he'd been through the exact same thing in terms of footy and career and changing, you know, you know, all that stuff. And he was huge, man. And I think 
I sort of, if I can bring that to the table and provide that for people going through concussion or type 1 diabetes or mental health and wellbeing stuff and use my experiences to further their lives mm. and create this personal relationship and this bond, um, well then, yeah, it's a fucking no-brainer for me, man. And uh, and I'm really excited about it. And, you know, I think I've got, I'm, I'm not too business savvy or smart or anything like that, but I've been through this stuff which sort of given me the idea and I've been lucky enough to work with an amazing group of people who have helped me design the website. They're called Gossip. They're in Melbourne and they're unreal. Um, and it's been it's been an amazing experience and I've absolutely loved it. And um, to be able to now get to the point where I can sort of start it all and start helping people is is great. And there'll be a bit of like a public speaking part to that as well. So, um, you know, for whoever wants me to come and talk similar to what we've done today, you know, talk yeah. about my experience and my journey and what I've been through and um, sort of relay a bit of that and a bit of the stuff I've learned with vulnerability and, and connection and things like that. So there'll be that sort of part of the business too, which I'm really excited about and um, looking forward to doing. So, uh, yeah, man, it's exciting times. And as I said, I think at the start of this year, I wanted to talk about, you know, what I'd been through and um, how tough that was, but it sort of led me to now and, you know, starting this business and playing footy again and um, enjoying my life and feeling great is sort of the cherry on top of this whole experience. And uh, yeah, I think as well, without, uh, you know, we're getting very philosophical at the philosophical 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 yeah, I like, yeah. no that's nice yeah, that's, that's good word that one i yeah, was actually really shortening it because I'm <laughs> yeah i know the well, yeah um <laughs> it's the <laughs> fact that <laughs> you said earlier like when you you know and i've been through this and and i hate sometimes we always say you know football this because that's what we're from but mm. anyone that's changed career paths mm. and done something different you do lose that purpose yeah you go fuck like why well, am i getting out of bed now absolutely what's next for me mm. but it sounds like now you found that next thing oh that's, definitely that's it's taken you know not that the fact that you don't want to play footy anymore but oh, yeah. you found something else you go fuck this is my why yeah absolutely man and I think um, yeah you're spot on and I think for a, for a long time um, you know I really struggled with that um, and I lost you know my identity my purpose and you get up and you're like fuck what am I doing and I think and I don't know whether I mean it's probably you're probably like this with the podcast mm. and when you're at the Giants too you know I've got this like different perspective on footy now as well yeah um, and I think a part of that is probably the concussion and part of that is probably this business that I'm starting I've thrown myself into is that now when I go footy train I'm training up in Sydney and I'm absolutely loving it but I've got this different perspective like I go I'm just enjoying it and I'm yeah. loving it oh the release the it's, release yeah. is everything and it's, I think it's it is something so evident in football that people say you need a release but mm. I honestly think that you need it no matter oh, what you do absolutely you could be anything you know mm. you could be like a zookeeper yeah be an accountant anything you want you need to have something else yeah you like outside that well that's look i'm not going to tell you what nah, your life but nah. I, I think for me personally if i'm doing one thing i go mad oh absolutely I, man. I, all, you, you can't put all your energy into one thing oh absolutely and it's funny like remember you go to those meetings and the afl pa stuff and yeah. they're always like to you, your first you're like, tell you first you know, all the best people are the ones who are doing stuff outside of footy as well and you go oh yeah right. yeah <laughs> like this young 18 year old is like oh whatever yeah, no worries, man. but they're absolutely spot on and i think uh, you know i'm yeah so pumped about it and um yeah i'm really looking forward to it man and i think yeah as i said with footy it sort of gave me a different perspective as well which is really refreshing so it's good um, just on footy this year you signed up with Sydney yep. obviously your brother's playing up there as well Tommy Tommy boy he's playing some very good football at the moment yeah he's kind of he big fella. struts around oh, is that, on, you know, oh. I've never seen someone yeah, he's un, like, he must have an all expenses paid membership at the Icebergs he does he, I, I, he's definitely got a membership there I've Him? actually snuck it a few times Tom Papley oh, perhaps, yeah. Ryan Clark yeah who else is there oh there's a few oh Ronks Oh, Ben Ronke, yeah. Ronks, yeah. He loves it. Oh, Ollie Florent. He's, Ollie he's always looking boy. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, the boys up there, they're very handsome young men. Yeah, they're And I've never around. seen them frequent. Oh. Are you going to be joining in this crew? Oh, <laughs> I'll be keeping my shirt on though, man. They're walking in the shirts off in their budgies. I'm just like, oh, no, thank you. I've got trackies and a skivvy on. I'll just like sit in the corner or something. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the coach of the um, Sydney team is Jeremy Laid. Like yeah, Laid. He's, he's coaching the VFL. How's he been going up there? Yeah, he's a ripper, man. He's hilarious. He's a great fellow. I, I get along really well with him. And yeah, hopefully... Does, I've never I'll, seen someone with the worst white line fever. Man, I've, I've heard ever, that. Like... He elbowed me once and I thought his elbow went through my chest. He, I've heard that. Tommy was saying that to me that 
apparently he was a psycho back when he used to play. He was a psycho. So I, don't I, know how he's, I don't know how he's in charge of teaching young men how yeah. to play ethically so football I'll, these days. So I'm looking forward to the first time he absolutely sprays me. Or yeah, no, him, he will. Might yeah. be like a slight elbow through the chest. Or How do you think that comp's going to go this year? I'm really excited by it. Mate, it's interesting. I mean, I actually haven't really looked into it too much because I sort of had a bit of stuff going on before I got up to Sydney and had to tick a few things off. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's a great concept. I think... Um, the idea of bringing it all together is is really good, and I think, you know, hopefully it gives the opportunity to, as it does with like in the VFL, but guys like in, I know there's like is it Southport, yep, um, like teams like that, which is sort of standalone up north, coming down there and playing against like VFL teams, like AFL, mm. feel that like it's I think it's can only strengthen the competition. I think, I think so. especially now with the AFL, the way it's going is that it's the mature age draft, well draftees is so, become such a big part of the game that. I think this competition can only strengthen that really. So that's you know, exciting, mate. I'm looking forward. And I think even one thing I was thinking too is the opportunity for like, because at the Swans, um, like a lot of the VFL guys are quite young. Yeah. Um, and I think that's part of the, something, some sort of number restriction on guys that are over a certain age. So mm. they have a lot of young guys. And even like a few of the games we play in Melbourne and stuff, the opportunity for these young 18, 19 to travel down to Melbourne, stay somewhere overnight, play a game. Like it's a great experience. Oh, mate, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's going to be great. And I think the fact that, you know, without foreseeing the future or saying something that people don't really realise is the fact that, and, you know, I'm under that no mistake and I feel like mm. this could touch wood. Actually, no, it will. Yeah, I feel it will. like this is going to happen. You're going to come out round one. Mm. You're going to kick six. Mm. Next week, you're going to kick five, but you're going to give off four. Four, that'd be right. Okay, the week after, you might say eight inside 50 tackles. Four, that'd, be, that'd, that, that'd be a record for me. <laughs> <laughs> they're just running into yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, it. Like After market. that, the next week is what will happen with these teams is, you know what footy seasons are like? Mm. People go down yeah, like and flies, then you get mate. those replacements mm. and they go, well, fuck, this guy plays exactly our model of football. He's playing in our twos. He's dominating. And then it goes bang. That's how it works. It sounds like a good plan to me, mate. Looking forward to that happening. I need to talk to Horse. Yeah. I'll, I'll to, oh, he hasn't I'll been up. answering the calls yeah, lately because I called hope- him a fair bit when I left. The other, I was like, yeah, just come, just come across, across yeah. and he, yeah, didn't get back. No, oh man, I'll be happy for him to call him. For me, that'd be great. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be looking forward to that. Um, mate, to finish up. Yeah. Lastly, um, with helping hands. Yeah. If you know someone's been touched today, which I'm sure there'll be many, many mm. people touched and um, want to learn more, reach out, have a chat with you about yep. how everything works. How do we, how do we find you on that? Yep. So www.helpinghandsmentoring.com.au. Um, go on there. You can look through all the services that are available and that I provide for whoever wants, wants help and you can book online. Um, so you can book date, time, um, sort of get in touch with me via email on there. Um, and I'll just be in touch with whatever you need and, and with the public speaking stuff as well. It's quite similar. So if you're a business or um, anyone who wants me to like sporting club, school, whoever, um, there's a separate page for that too. And you can go on and, and book and, and have a chat to me. So it's all pretty straightforward, man. And if all that fails, just flick us a message on Insta or something and I'll yeah, help you out. In. Yeah, slide, slide in. into my DMs. Yeah, so. um, no, nah, and we'll have all those links in, in the show notes, guys. So make sure you just go to the show notes. It's just the show in the notes. Yep. Um, Paddy, man. I can't thank you enough for coming in, bro. No, thank Honestly, you, brother. When, when we spoke a couple of months ago, I've been really looking forward to this um, this chat. Yeah. And I'm not just saying this, man, but the, the amount of respect I have for you oh, thanks, brother. and what you've been through, man, I, I honestly am, am blessed to call you a friend and, no, and thanks, very, man. very happy that you feel comfortable to come in and, and chat. No, thank you, mate. And yeah, you're doing a ripping job as well. And I think um, I've watched you probably grow over the last few years into something that's absolutely massive and it's a credit to you mate and, and all the work you put in and who you are so you're killing it mate and i'm proud of you i'm looking forward to our next show mm. i think we book another one in yeah and um i'm sure there'll be some more news coming up I yeah know. hopefully newsy no Get no it. not newsy oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're not very newsy no. <laughs> we will newsy might be engaged or something potentially i think sure. that that's very oh. that's very prevalent yeah that could be i think that by the way i've been getting a lot of people <laughs> lately i have a bad vocabulary right yeah, i have this so a I. unique skill though of saying words that don't fit in but i say them so confidently that people think maybe they actually does fit in that's an amazing skill man so i had someone the other day say mate you keep saying this yeah, that doesn't make sense it, like you're saying it in no. the wrong aspect but i was like who cares? Go with him. Yeah, fucking know. Fuck up. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what, what I mean? That's why it's called Dylan Friends, because he can do it every <laughs> once. Exactly. <laughs> okay, vocabulary and dictation yeah. does not survive on this show. So no, not important. Leave not, me alone. Not relevant. Um, Paddy, thanks so much, mate. Links in the show notes. Um, and let's go have one more drink. No, I'm okay for that. And then we'll... It's Friday. 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 See you, bro. Thanks, brother.
This episode of the Dylan Friends Podcast is brought to you by Dr. V Energy. Alrighty, my friends, I want to let you in on a little secret that's been keeping my body feeling bloody fantastic throughout the week. It's Dr. V Energy Drinks. After a big gym session or after I let my hair down on the weekend with a few friends having a couple of cordials, I drink Dr. V Energy Bender Mender to help me recover, bounce back, and get back to performing at my best. I'm telling you now, there is no artificial ingredients in sight. It's 100% natural and made with wild herbs and berries that have been used for centuries to heal and protect the liver and kidneys. The ingredients are even hand-picked from a Siberian forest, I kid you not. You do not get more wholesome than this, my friends. Bender Mender is available at Easy Marts, independent IGAs, or online at www.drv.com.au. Use the promo code hashtag DylanFriends for 15% off the online store. So be better and drink Dr. V with me.